Hey guys, let's look at two common ways of declaring a function in JavaScript, arrow functions and regular functions. In most cases, we use both of these functions without considering their suitability or differences. In this video, we'll look at three key differences between these functions and when to use either of them. First, let's look at implicit return. In regular functions, the return keyword can be used to return any value from the function. The function will implicitly return undefined if we don't use the return keyword to return anything. Let's look at these code examples. Let's console log our function. Example 1. Our function returns 10 because we use the return keyword. Let's look at another example. Let's console log our function. Example 2. Our function returned undefined because we didn't use the return keyword. Now let's look at this example again and let's console log it. We get undefined because the function does not have a return statement that actually returns a value. The return statement in this function simply ends the function and therefore returns undefined. So to fix this, we need to make sure that the return statement returns an actual value. In this case, we'll ask it to return number. And now let's run it again. There you go, it returns our number. However, arrow functions behave in the same way when returning values, but there is one advantage you can take from it. If the arrow function has only one expression, you can declare it without the query braces and the expression will be implicitly returned. Let's look at this arrow function example. Let's call our function that returns 7. And if we remove the query braces, if you call our function again, we should get the same. And there you go. Secondly, let's look at this keyword. This keyword is one of the most used keyword in JavaScript. But when it comes to regular functions and arrow functions, it entirely behaves in a different way. The value of this inside a regular function is determined by how the function is called. In an arrow function, the this value is inherited from the enclosing scope. For example, let's look at this object from a regular functions perspective. If we run this, we will get the name John. And there you go. Now, let's look at the same object with arrow function. And if we console log it, we will get undefined. And there you go. So basically, in the example above, the regular function logs the value of object.name because this keyword inside the function refers to objects. Whereas the arrow function logs undefined because the this value inside the arrow function is inherited from the global scope where name is not defined. So basically, in an arrow function, this keyword always refers to the outer context. This means that this keyword is lexically bound in arrow functions. Lastly, let's look at argument objects. In regular functions, the argument keyword can be used to access the past argument when the function is called. For instance, if I call a function with three arguments, I can access all of them using the argument keyword. Let's look at this example. Let's call our regular function and pass in this argument and run it. So you can see it returns our argument 1, 2, 3. And these are just their index positions. But arrow functions do not have their own argument. They use the argument from the outer function. Let's look at this example. Let's call our function and pass in some arguments. Now we get a reference error saying argument not defined. So to access the argument directly in an arrow function, we need to use the rest parameter syntax, which looks like so. And now, if we call our arrow function with the same argument, it should log our argument out. And there you go. So, the behavior of the argument keyword within an arrow function is similar to the behavior of this keyword we discussed earlier, and it is resolved lexically. Based on the examples and advantages, you might think that arrow functions are better than regular functions, but that's not the case. Arrow functions are often used in cases where you need to use a function as an argument to another function, or when you need to store a function in a variable. They are particularly used in combination with array methods like map filter and reduce method because they do not have their own this value and can access the this value of the surrounding context here's an example 
In general, you should use arrow function if you need a shorter syntax and if the value of this does not matter in the function. However, there are some situations where you should avoid using arrow functions. In fact, it is recommended to use regular functions when dealing with promises, callback functions with dynamic context and object methods. So as a JavaScript developer, it is crucial to understand the differences between these functions and be able to identify the best type of function for your requirement. I hope you found some value in this video. Please don't forget to hit the like button. Help the channel grow by considering to subscribe. Thanks and I'll see you in the next one.